Welcome back. You're watching Market Pulse on Bloomberg TV India. Now, an exclusive conversation with Vikas Kemani, President and Co-Head Wholesale Capital Markets for Edelweiss Financial Services. Vikas, thanks so much for joining us. We understand you kickstart your India Conference 2013 today in New York itself. Tell us what you've got lined up there. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Uh, I think uh, th this is our annual conference and uh, in New York uh, we do every year. And uh, we have uh, you know a set of companies ex uh, showcasing, uh, which basically you know representing multiple uh, sectors in the IT IT sector, pharmaceutical sector, banking sector. Some of, some of them are in media sector. So across the sectors, and some mix of large cap and mid cap companies are sort of being exhibited. So I think and this this is a sort of uh, good forum to uh, sort of uh, showcase companies to investors, and I think which is what is. Uh, uh, so, so, so we are planning to do investors from all over the U.S. Uh, typically come there and participate. So we are expecting about you know 30 odd investors sort of coming in and going to interact with these companies and uh, explore what are the sort of new ideas uh, that they can invest money into. Uh, I think uh, uh, definitely there is a sort of huge amount of interest in India, as you know, and investors are constantly looking for what are the sort of uh, you know after having run so much and so much money has got already deployed, what are the new ideas where sort of they can put money in. So I think uh, it, it should be an interesting and exciting opportunity, uh, you know, both for the investors and companies. Because uh, it's interesting, you know, you were talking about this investor conference at a time when the market is very, very close to its all-time highs. But most of these companies and their growth rates are nowhere near the previous peak. I mean, they're not growing at 20, 30 percent how it used to be back in 2007. How is this dichotomy going to play out in the coming few months, you think? And what will, how will investors weigh now uh, just multiples, whether it's price to earnings or price to books? Because growth rates are nowhere close to 2007. Absolutely true. I think, I think there are two things to look at when you look at the you know, uh, valuation and all-time high number. I think while the growth rates are no, nowhere close to what they were at the previous time, but I think in the last four or five years, the earnings have grown. I mean, from uh, they are higher than you know. I think uh, at least you know 30 to 40, 35 percent from what they were before. So I think even that growth of the in the earnings which has come in the last five years, that should also you know have to reflect. So it's not that in index is hitting all time high and our uh, you know P multiple is also hitting all time high. Our P multiple is not hitting all time high. So I think a the the pace of the growth has come down, no doubtedly, and that's undoubtedly, and that's the reason I think uh, uh, we have sort of. Uh, uh, seen this kind of market uh, sentiment going on for, for last uh, 12 to 18 months, but I think uh, right now investors are looking at that from macro perspective. Uh, you know what is changing, what is likely to change, and what it holds in. You know uh, for them from our next 12 to 18 months. I think currently there are certain concerns, and I think if you overlook them, what could be the potential? And that is how I think investors are sort of evaluating. Other uh, significant uh, sort of thing to watch out or which can have an impact is global liquidity. I mean, so far we have seen uh, in last. Uh, Especially in the last six to eight months, a very uh, benign global liquidity scenario, and I think if if that continues, I think you know, and more and more avenues of uh, uh, sort of investment or asset classes are closing down. I think you, I mean, gold as an asset class is that getting out of flavor, commodity is getting out of flavor, oil is getting out of flavor. So I think where do you sort of invest money, especially when an easy easy liquidity scenario, and equity is the only one where you know sort of you can find some hope. And I think you, the, the developed market we have seen equity doing well, and emerging markets also seen fairly large flow of the you know money in the equity as an asset class. And India being one of the you know better placed emerging market within the you know uh, that basket, I think we have seen disproportionately large uh, uh, share of flow despite uh, the problems at our home. So I think if the problems start getting sorted out, I think that could sort of. Uh, 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 be very you know uh, great opportunity for us, but I think that that is what investors are right now saying that you know these are possible scenarios. We assign the risk to each scenario and see still risk adjusted basis. I think you know makes sense to look at India given the fact that macro uh, uh, indicators or macroeconomic factors are sort of uh, seem to be falling in place. Sure, sure, and it's a very interesting time to be having that conference in uh, the U.S. Vikas, I guess. So, last one week has been all about this talk about QE and whether QE will, will start winding up and what will happen if the pair down starts. But anyway, what's the profile of the companies that you would be showcasing this time? Is it at all different from last year? Because when it comes to foreign investors, we've just seen single-minded interest. It's pharma stocks, it's private sector banks, and it's, it's consumption. Do you see that pattern changing? Vikas? Okay, I think uh, we've just lost that line. We'll try and touch base with him again. But it's a pretty interesting time to be having that conference. I was just thinking that you know one, one really wonders what will happen. This whole one-sided flow situation that we've had so far this year, whether the second half will actually continue that way.
you know, in that one, let's just take a quick break right now. So we, because we still have a whole bunch of themes to discuss with Vikas, will be joining us in just two minutes from now. That discussion continues regarding Edelweiss India Conference 2013. Back with Market Pulse, and we were in conversation with Vikas Khemani. Edelweiss is holding an investor conference in New York, which kickstarts tonight. Vikas, I was trying to ask you if the profile of companies is changing because over the last one year, the interest continues in the same area of the Indian market private sector banks, pharma stocks, consumption stocks. Do you see that changing? See, I think broadly, you need to always take the company which are, you know, and, uh, sort of interesting for the investors. But I think one more, I mean, so you obviously you have to have the, you know, companies from the sector where they are sort of liking and wanting to explore uh, investment opportunity. But we always attempt to take, you know, some of the companies which we think uh, markets are sort of ignoring, not really you know, paying attention as much they should, or, you know, there is sort of uh, risk reward is adjusted, uh, uh, more favorable, uh, uh, you know, in investing and are slightly out. So those kind of interesting companies we try and carry. So apart Apart from the you know sort of uh, 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 popular sectors, we have sort of we always try and find those companies, and I think some of those companies are sort of we are we are uh, uh, displaying them, such as you know I think Wipro, Doctor Eddies, or you know company let us say for example NDTV. So I think you know th th that attempt is always there because I think in these conferences when you meet companies, you know investor sort of uh, spend a serious amount of time to see you know what could they invest from next two to three years perspective and we, we sort of display these kind of companies but having said that i think uh, to answer your question at a macro, uh, broader level i think uh, as we move along investors are saying that you know consumer is done too much it's slowing down can we look at something else you know you know in banking what we can look at where the valuations are in favor so investors are trying to explore so uh, you know more and newer options so i think we will have to you know sort of incrementally see uh, what what else you know you can sort of showcase so Vikas, in taking that conversation or that point ahead itself, what are some of the themes that you actually expect to get played out when we talk about the domestic markets from here? See, I think very clearly, you know, uh, I mean, we have, uh, uh, you know, a situation where interest rates are peaked out, capital expenditure cycles are bottomed out, you know, and I think somewhat there's a move towards uh, fiscal consolidation is already underway. So I think uh, in this scenario, clearly one uh, uh, interest rate sensitive cases are, you know, definitely uh, one obvious choice. And, uh, and we have a long way to go as far as the interest rates are concerned. I think only thing is that the timing, what kind of pace it will be chosen. But I think it looks like, you know, you'll have another two, three cuts in offing, uh, you know, in this financial year. And probably it will be followed uh, post, I think, uh, general elections and the new government gets formed. So I think, you know, uh, interest rate sensitive becomes the obvious uh, sort of choice uh, at this point in time. I feel consumer will start uh, sort of, uh, growth will start getting moderated. And I think that probably given the rich valuations, you will see uh, they being slightly on the back burner or from a return perspective. Companies might still continue to do well, but you might not see a great uh, sort of return from the stock market perspective. So I think, you know, and some of the, I think, uh, beaten down infrastructure sec uh, sectors where, you know, if the, if the cap capital expenditure cycle sort of starts picking, picking up, you will see stocks in industry industrial capital goods uh, uh, infrastructure segment I think coming back. So I think we are sort of positioning to look at more in interest rate sensitive in banking space, in infrastructure space, in capital goods space and also obviously you got to always look at uh, you know bottom up uh, uh, fundamentally sound company in the niche space, smaller spaces that, that, that process is always continuing irrespective of whichever cycle of the market you are. So I think you know that broadly how we are sort of uh, uh, planning to play next 6 to 12 months uh, you know uh, in the markets. Because on a last five months or, or last five months or so, we've got around about 14 to 15 billion dollars worth of inflows, but markets really haven't moved that significantly. And as you mentioned, some of the themes. Do you believe the second half could actually be pretty good for a markets going from here? And what could be some of the trigger points there? I think the way I look at, while as I said, that macro seems to be falling into place, but I guess uh, there are two things uh, one should look at, or three things one should look at before you know we decide on how the market is going to pan out. One is I think we have a very a big election event which is ahead of us, and I think that is going to create some kind of overhang or uncertainty in the market. Second, I think even if you know macroeconomic uh, uh, factors are sort of turning a bit favorable, I think the uh, you know, the pace will be different. I think the the data points which will come will be very. Uh, sort of uh, varying and you won't have all the data falling into place at a go. So I think that will sort of induce, uh, you know, uh, volatility in the market. They, that will sort of always sort of, uh, some people will believe that these data are reliable, some people will believe that like, you know, let's say tomorrow I, IIP data improves, One, some people will believe that they, they are improving for good or some people may not believe. So I think those kind of data will introduce uh, volatility in the market. 
And thirdly, I think you know you will have uh, international uncertainty where there are a lot of noise is being made about or expectation management is happening around withdrawal of the liquidity. So I think, in my opinion, while I feel that. Indian markets from a medium term to long term perspective are you know uh, uh, set to deliver good returns from here on. Ha only thing is that how do you play out the market in the next 6 to 12 months till the time general elections happen. I feel there will be good volatility factor in the market. Uh, uh, we would definitely be you know uh, uh, we are uh, uh, cautiously optimist in the market. We think you know things will start looking up uh, from here on. Having said that, there would be good amount of volatility in the market driven by the news flow both from the local as well as international sector. So one has to be prepared to deal with this volatility uh, and if that, that, that is the you know, preparedness is there, then I think one can sort of definitely deploy the money in the market and I feel lots of investors which have come in the market, I mean so the 15 billion dollar money which has come in, they have come in knowing very well that there is a big election ahead of us, knowing very well that economic sectors are not going to fall in a hurry, uh, in place in a hurry. So I think this money in my opinion is long term money and I think pace of the money will, uh, uh, how, 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 how much more will come, the pace will really depend on uh, overall global factors but I think the trend is likely to continue. Okay, Vikas, thanks so much for joining and good talking to you today. Let's see what comes out of the conference. All right, that's Edelweiss gearing up for uh, their annual investor conference. We'll take a very quick break on the other side.